in my domain Got the whole crowd screaming out our name It's a blowout, it's a hurricane It's over before you know it Why you shaking? We're a dynasty in the making We're the royalty, now we're breaking Down the enemy, move over the soldiers Take a swing, I can take a hit We die, it's fine, we live for this It's all for this We're gonna stand on top with our hands in the sky Gonna raise our cup to the stadium lights For the glory For the glory We celebrate with the city tonight Hear the hometown cheer, it's the Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you haven't gotten the road course racing bug out of your system because we're continuing the fever here, preparing for race number 20 at maybe one of the biggest wild card races that we ever go to on the schedule. Now, not saying that Baja 1000 Rally Race that we were at wasn't a wild card race, but that was the first time that that track debuted on the schedule. We've been coming to this race track pretty regular in the Hershey's Cup Series. This is a 12 mile street course, road course, country roads course, home to the turn of death. This is Thornton Raceway. We're getting set for three laps of racing. Now I know it probably seems like, why are we only doing three? As I said, it's 12 miles in length. It's not like we're running your typical mile and a half, two mile uh, road course. This is a big racetrack and it takes them a long time to get around to complete a lap. And so we are going to be having only a minimal three laps in today's event. But a lot of moves can be made for position through the field. A lot of trouble can break out. And here's the thing, no cautions here today. So any trouble that breaks out will break in, courtesy of the NCAA split cam to show you what happened. But these drivers are not going to get to line back up and be able to start again. It's basically, you got what you got, you got to try to avoid the wrecks and put yourself in position to try and find victory lane. Now, as we come into this race, there are going to be only six more races after this for the regular season, which means that it's getting down to crunch time for those drivers that have not yet already locked themselves up spots in this season's Hershey's Cup Series playoffs. A number of drivers have already done that. Three-time winner Brooke Allen has definitely locked herself up a spot in the playoffs. Alex Drayden, ninth in the point stands, a two-time winner, has also done the same. A lot of question marks surrounding the driver of the two, Dylan Young, a two-time winner this season, who finds himself coming into this race outside the top 30 in points in 33rd. So right now, doesn't matter if he has two wins, doesn't matter if you have 20 wins. Being outside the top 30 in the points, those wins count for nothing in terms of the postseason. But you've got other drivers that are running really well up in the point standings that have a win, like Joshua Collard. He's the points leader. Tim Walsh, third in the points. Uh, Zachary Fitzwater. He's fifth in the point standings. So there's a lot of drivers that are running well in the points with a win. Look like they've got a chance, but they would like now to be able to get a second win to get themselves more bonus points, to get themselves a higher seed in the playoffs, and of course to get a better opportunity to move on to the next round of the playoffs when the postseason begins. But it's a wild card race. It's going to be a crazy one. It's time now to go down trackside, get those most famous words in motorsports, which you're not going to hear because this race was put on replay. Because Thornton doesn't like me. Thornton is a track that is not nice and decides, you know what? I'm going to crash on you mid-race. And so in order to avoid having to go through live races and have it crash in the middle, I ran a race, saved the replay, and we're going to get ready to go racing here now with Sean Galligan on the point, Brandon Gonzalez in second. Galligan looking for his first win of the season. Gonzalez looking for his second of the season. And like I said, no cautions. They are looking to their left, seeing the turn of death. Who's going to fall off that in the first lap? We'll find out. It's going to be a long time before we do. 12 miles await these drivers. The green flag is in the air, and they've all been run over by a train. I think, uh, what, 17th place driver just, uh, just took the win because 16th to the front all got run over by a, uh, an engine. 
This is a battle that's actually for third place as Brandon Gonzalez, I'm sorry, no, it's for fourth because John Arndt just took the race lead. Back to second, now Brandon Gonzalez, Levi McIntyre now moves up to third. Now, I should say that with, like we said, Dylan Young outside of the top 30 in the points and also our Charlotte winner, Leon Alvarez, out of the uh, top 30 in the points, we only have a total of 15, I believe it's 15, yeah, 15. No, I'm sorry, 13 different race winners inside the top 30 in the point stands right now. Right now, two spots would be available to drivers to get into the playoffs via points. And those spots currently are being held by highest running driver without a win, Jordan Anderson. He's fourth in the points coming to this race. And Charles Sanfer, who is sixth in the points coming to this race. I'm going to hear it. John already got out in front very early, but... Now you see how these straightaway, highway straightaways seem to kick in. I think the 23 Brady Gonzalez got a little bit of draft from the 11 of James Richardson. And that's going to allow him to hold the top spot. And now you're going to see the, the tandems come into play here as they get onto these long straightaways. Whoever's got the most cars lined up in whichever lane is going to be the lane that moves. Top five, six, now seven are all single files. The first car to step out is uh, Johnny Gardner there in seven going for fifth place on James McLeod. He's got Shane Lake behind him. Field kind of split up a little bit there too. Go back to Charles Sanford, Sean Galgan. I believe that's Kyle Keith at the tail end of that lead group as they fly by. Then you got a second group back here. Jessica Shelton, Kev Shearer, RJ Reynolds, our winner from uh, last week at Springfield, that dirt track. There's Dylan Young, Benjamin Miles. Is that uh, Kyle Matthews? No, that's Daniel Gilbert. Wrong light blue car along with Jordan Anderson, and there is also the 24 of Benny Watson. Now, he's actually got a story coming into this race because we mentioned, you know, Dylan Young struggling to stay in the top 30 in the points. Same for Leon Alvarez. Well, Benny Watson is kind of in the same tub of hot water. Coming into this race, the 24 finds himself down near the danger zone, currently situated in the 31st position in the point standings. So right now, three former race winners are outside the top 30 in points. Now, the good news for Benny Watson is He's actually tied with Shane Lake for 30th in the stands. So technically, Benny Watson is currently in the top 30 in the point standings. But he really needs a good run here to get himself away from that danger zone, get back into the top 30, and uh, put some distance between himself and 30th in the point standings. We saw Dylan Young was up in that second pack. He's obviously also looking to have a decent enough run to get himself back in the top 30 in points. The gap between him and 30th in the standings is currently, I believe my calculations are correct, 18 points. Drivers he would need to pass here in this race would include Shane Lake, Benny Watson, Leon Alvarez. Uh, we know that Lake and Watson are both running currently up here inside of the top 20. It's been a good battle up here at the front. One driver, or actually two drivers, it's not surprising me to see up here at the front of the field. If you didn't tune into our Baja rally race, it basically came down between four drivers at the end. Charles Sanfer, John Arndt, uh, Joshua Collard, and Benny Watson. The eventual race winner was John Arndt. Well, two of those four drivers are up here at the front of this field. John Arndt in the 05, Charles Sanfer in the 03. Here's one of the tough spots right there, that guardrail. A lot of drivers seem to hit that and then go off into the forest. Looks like everyone in this lead pack were okay. And now we're coming to the area where the turn of death comes into play. We're going to bring out the bars here because we're going to go to our none camera coming off this final corner and see if anyone's going to fall off that 30-foot drop, the dreaded turn of death. Right there on the right, that is the dreaded turn of death. Ooh, Levi McIntyre close. McLeod saved it. Wow. Oh, there goes one, it's Brooke Allen! Three-time winner Brooke Allen has tasted the turn of death! Oh man, riding such a wave of momentum and Thornton is not kind to maybe one of the first confirmed drivers in this season's playoffs. Got a second group back here, it looks like they're all single file so they're gonna get through it pretty well and I'm noticing a couple of notables in that group of race cars. Uh, one of them, Tim Walsh right there, Comes into this race third in the point stage. Go a little further back. There's Leon Alvarez, our Charlotte winner. We mentioned he needs a good run. He's not having a decent outing here today. Anthony McCrory there in the 61, former winner of the season, eighth in the points. He's not having a good outing so far here at uh, Thornton. And I also noticed a little further back there is Alex Drayden, two-time winner and ninth in the point standings. 
And there also is our uh, defending champion, Trent Dunham. Got some cars on pit road. Cole Baker, Kat Batson, Dallas McIntosh, and Blaine Keys. Cody Smart back here with a lot of damage. And Keith Batson with a lot of damage, both externally and apparently internally, as black smoke erupting from under his car. Dylan Poteet. Boy, he has been on quite a streak of bad finishes. Former points leader this season, now 12 in the points coming into this race. We got a new race leader, Charles Sanford, got around Brandon Gonzalez. And of course, as I stated, all of these incidents with these drivers involved, you're seeing what happened to them during the course of this race, courtesy of the uh, wonderful editing crew and camera people here at NSA Ray and the NSA Ray split cam. Charles Sanford in that 0-3, you look back at uh, last week at Springfield, it was looking like he was going to be one of the players to maybe pick up his first win of the season. I'm sorry, not um, that was actually two weeks ago, I should say, where he finished runner-up to R.J. Reynolds. Of course, last week was actually uh, Brooke Allen taking the checkers at the road course of Watkins Glen, where Sanford actually had a good run there, too. Eighth in the, point, or eighth in the finishing results, and as a result, it jumped him up to the... Uh, sixth position in the point stands. He jumped up five spots. Looking really good right now. Now remember Charles Sanford did not make the playoffs last season. He did finish out the year with a trip to victory lane in front of his home crowd at the season finale of Auto Club but with what's been a bit of a struggling year overall for Retro Racing Enterprises all three drivers still looking for their first trip to victory lane. Charles Sanford looking good here and like I said he had a good finish at Baja Rally, which is a kind of a long endurance track as well with a lot of elevation changes. So no surprise to see him running well here. Another driver that's running really well too that's been on a, a good streak of momentum, and that is the 29 of Kyle Keith. I honestly think we're not too far out from seeing this driver go to victory lane. If I'm not mistaken, we got Daytona coming up pretty soon uh, in the next couple of weeks. And Kyle Keith, a former winner at that track in the Pizza Hut X Series. Well, Kyle Keith coming into this race finds himself situated 17th in the points, Danes. Hit a bit of a bump last week at Watkins Glen, but he's been pretty consistent with his finish. He's been looking pretty good, and I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility for Kyle Keith to possibly put it in victory lane uh, Maybe at Daytona. It's one of his best tracks. I believe it's his home track as well. Look at here at two drivers that really need good runs here today. I mean, even if they don't win, they'd love to finish in the top 10. The 99 of Levi McIntyre, the 11 of James Richardson. Both these drivers come into this race down near the danger zone. And I don't mean the danger zone of 30th in the point stands. I mean the danger zone of possibly losing their charter for next season. Uh, in order to lose your charter, you have to finish in 38th or worse. Right now, those five spots are held by Johnny Gardner, James Richardson, Jessica Shelton, Cat Batson, and Blaine Keys. And we've already seen Cat Batson and Blaine Keys have encountered issues early on in this race, so obviously uh, their struggle is going to continue. But you see Johnny Gardner running well right now. Also, you saw James Richardson was running well, and Levi McIntyre is not that terribly far ahead of that cutoff line either. He's, I believe, 34th in the points coming into this race. As we've already had Brooke Allen fall off the turn of death. She was the first victim to the stone quarry drop-off. Let's see if anybody else is going to join her here at the completion of lap number two. Go into our freeze cam and see. Ooh, Kyle Keith, close call. Jessica Shelton, close call. You notice McLeod gave a lot of room. Baskinger with a close encounter there. Looks like most drivers have gotten themselves single file, so they're able to make it through the exit of that corner pretty well and not get their tires off the racing surface. I mean, the best save was James McLeod, obviously. And it looks like at this point, the only driver that has tasted the turn of death here at Thornton is Brooke Allen. Probably out of everybody in the field that could end up falling off the turn of death. Not that I would wish anybody bodily harm, but in terms of drivers that can afford falling off the turn of death, I think Brooke Allen might be that only driver because she's got three wins this season. I mean, right now, mathematically, it's looking almost impossible that she'll fall outside of the top 30 in points. She's all but locked herself up a spot in the playoffs. So a fall off the turn of death isn't going to hurt her points-wise in terms of her uh, goal to make it into the chase for the championship, especially with the, the point system we have here. I mean, uh, we talked with the... Uh, last truck race about how congested it is. Double digit race winners vying for a single digit number of playoff positions. I think we've got now 15 different race winners in that series trying to get eight uh, available spots in the playoffs. 
Here in this series, though, we've ended up having, I believe, a total of, I want to say, I think 18, 19 different race winners this season. Might well be 17, and they're vying for 16 spots in the playoffs. So obviously a lot more space for drivers to be able to make moves and get themselves into the playoffs with a trip to victory lane here in the final uh, seven races, including this one of the season. We also should point out, it kind of, you know, we get looking at this race, we get into a groove of watching these drivers run, but we gotta remember, it's only three laps. When the drivers hit the line the last time by, believe it or not, that was the white flag. So the next time they hit the line, it's the checkers. So you are currently watching the race for the win. Charles Sanford, John Art, Johnny Gardner, Brandon Gonzalez, Kyle Keith, and Levi McIntyre. Out of those six, only two have previously been to Victory Lane this season, John Arndt and Brandon Gonzalez. The other four looking for their first trip to Victory Lane this year. Not 100% certain who the former winners are at this track. I don't think this track debuted back in season one. I think it was either season two or season three. Uh, it was season three, it's looking like. Uh, no, it wasn't even season three. It was season four. Wow, we've only been here twice previous to this season, apparently. Yeah, Thornton made its debut back in season four. And it was uh, Jake Baskinger who won the inaugural Thornton race, the defending winner of this race last year was Dallas McIntosh. Well, you know, that's not going to be a twofer for him as he was on pit road with damage. Woo, Brandon Gonzalez gets two tires up there on the shoulder. Don't want to do that. Sanford with a bit of a gap right now, and it looked like Gardner, Art, and McIntyre were lined up to try and run him down there with that draft. And then John Art steps out of line for second place. Not too much further before we get to the line here. This is, I think, the final straightaway section before we get down to that uh, windy area with the guardrail and then the turn of death. So any drivers back there second on back going to make a move on Sanford, they better make it quick. Charles Sanford, if he wins this race, might make a little trip to the bowling alley. I'm sure there's a bowling alley in the one of the villages here. I know there's a church. I know there's a couple of restaurants. There's a McDonald's, a Taco Bell. It's got to be a bowling alley here, right? Oh, doesn't hit the guardrail. Nice corner there for Sanford. John Art there into second place. Sanford was looking at the back of John Art. Last time we were at a long road course back at the uh, Baja 1000 Rally. It might be a little bit of reverse rolls here. Three, four, five carling separation between Sanford and John Art. Sanford's just got to come around off the final corner. I think he's got this thing as he's going to bring it down here to the start finish line. Finally, the winless streak is over for Charles Sanford. He gets his first win of the season, first win for Retro Racing Enterprise, and it takes place here at Thornton. Charles Sanford picking up the 7-10 split. He came into this race in one of the playoff positions, but not because he had a win, but because he was second highest of the non-winners in the points. Now, Charles Sanford may very well have become the first Retro Racing Enterprises driver this season to lock himself up a spot in the championship hunt. Like we said last year, he was not in the playoffs. Or was he in the playoffs? He was in the playoffs, but he finished ninth overall. He was eliminated in the uh, second round. Won the season finale at Auto Club. One of two wins that year. I think if I recall correctly, his best year, he was in the final four back in season four. In a battle with Anthony McCurry, Blaine Keys, and then eventual champion Matt Haas. That's the closest he's ever gotten to a championship. And now, he's got an opportunity to maybe make it into the final four once again this year. John Art with a great run there in second place. Driver that came into this race situated in the uh, 14th position in the points. Didn't have the best of runs at Watkins Glen. So bounced back from that poor performance. And then a great run there for Johnny Gardner. Driver that's trying to get himself out of that charter danger zone. Kyle Keith brings it home there in fourth. The consistent finishes continue for that 2019. Brandon Gonzalez, great run there in fifth place. 
Uh, he's 13th in the points coming to this race. He and John Arm both did not have the best of runs at Watkins Glen and kind of countered that here this week. The rest of the top 10 were Levi McIntyre, Shane Lake. I believe got rookie of the race in seventh. Jessica Shelton there in eighth. Kev Shearer ninth. And James Richardson completes the top 10. But that's going to do it here from our race at Thornton. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to get a like, subscribe, and become part of the crew today. We've shown you, we're going to show you your full feature results here. And then your rookie points and your overall points heading into next week. All three series are back at Rockingham, North Carolina. You're not going to want to miss it. The chase towards the chase for the championship continues on here on the Industry Sports Channel. Offline racing at its best.